Ken Spriggs here with part five of my uh, Bandai Millennium Falcon build uh, for the 144 scale. Uh, before we get into that, and I'll show you some more uh, progress I've gotten done, There's a lot of good things done on here. Uh, I did pick up a new, uh, two more kits actually, which I want to show you. I'm not going to start building those right now, except for one part that I did, and I'll show you here in a minute. But um, I definitely like the Bandai kits, so I'm looking to get. Uh, the other ones, especially the 144 uh, scale, I want them to be in the same scale. Uh, maybe somewhere down the road, I'll look at the 172s. They're all so kind of cool. They have more detail as well. All right, so let me show you what I have here. All right, so this is one of my favorites, and that is the U-wing fighter and the Tie Star Striker from Rogue One. Uh, really cool kits. Uh, I really like these a lot. So at some point, I'm going to start building them. What surprised me especially were the little mini tanks. When I first saw them in like the pictures, they didn't seem that cool, but they have a lot of detail, a lot of really cool detail. So um, I snapped together one of those and they were kind of cool. I really like those a lot. But this is a neat kit because it's the 144 scale. It comes with the, um, the U-Wing, which is pretty neat. I like it a lot. And the TIE Striker is pretty cool too. So um, definitely gonna wanna build that one there. Um, and then the other one is also from Rogue One and it's the Red Squadron. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much not collecting all the different X-Wing fighters. I know there's different ones from the different sets, but I wanted this one because it's basically just like the, the regular one from Luke uh, originally, the one that we're used to. And, uh, and once again, I got it because it had the 144. <coughs> Excuse me. This one comes with a 172 scale and a 144, two kits in one. So uh, likewise, I'm not gonna build the 172 just yet, maybe somewhere down the road. But I did build the uh, the 144 already. <clears throat> Went together fairly easily. And uh, I think it turned out really nicely. There we go. And it's pretty tiny. There you, go. you can see some of that detailing on there. I think it turned out really well. And I did some weathering. So this went together just in a few hours. It didn't take me that long. Maybe a little longer because I, I started with a base coat of black and I just black coated the whole thing. Then I put it all together and I used the stickers. Uh, once again, love the stickers. The stickers went on really nicely to put the red stripes and the different markings on it, as you can see. <clears throat> and then other than that, um, I just did a little bit of painting like the back engine novels, I used some gunmetal on them, and I used some red. It's kind of hard to see in there, but I used some red in the uh, the engines. There you go. But other than that, even the cockpit, that's a sticker, which turned out really well. It's pretty cool. Everything else is the stickers. And beyond that, in order to get that detail, I used uh, some weathering pastels. I have two sets from Tamiya. I have one which is uh, I use the soot black. I use the dark rust, and then the other set I uh, use the the light rust, orange rust, gunmetal, the silver. So I use those, and I use the brush so I can get it in the little little recesses and get some really cool detail in there. So. So that's pretty much ready to go, and this is cool too, the wings even go out and come back down again, it's pretty cool. So for the size of it, it is a really nice little kit, and I think it's cool because it's in the same scale as the Millennium Falcon, so, so I can use that. I do have another one on order right now to come in the mail, it's the, um, the First Order X-Wings, there's two of them and they're the same scale. Those I want mainly to put in a diorama with the Millennium Falcon when it's completed. Uh, and like I said earlier, uh, I'm not going to make a major diorama. <coughs> Maybe just something flat. Give it a desert uh, look to it. Get some like material for making model railroads for sand, that's all. Maybe some very minor structures in the back. But primarily just have the Millennium Falcon on display and then the two... Uh, 
the two um, TIE fighters chasing it. So, so other than that, um, I'm not really going to focus on building some of these others right now. Except for this one here, because it was really quick, like I said. Uh, the only other thing I might do on it a little bit, just to finish it up, is maybe chip. Do some chipping on some of those decals, and that's about it. Other than that, that's about all I need to do. Something this scale, the, um, the weathering powders are just fine for it. I don't need to, um, to use any paint weathering or oils or anything like that that I'm going to do on like the Millennium Falcon. So. Okay, so that turned out pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the progress on the Millennium Falcon. All right, so I painted the uh, photo etch back wall to the cockpit, and I just gave it some real simple colors. I just have flat black on the main part of it, and then there's a few sections that are gray. It looks a little bit choppy, but I'm not going to worry about it because it's you're not really going to see it that well. You're mainly just going to see the light sticking through, as you can see there, and there will be all different colors. So that'll illuminate it. Uh, and then on the inside, there's some detail that I painted. A couple parts black, a couple parts gray that match it. I've already done a little bit of dry brushing. You can see right there. I'll do some more onto the black parts just to give it some subtle details. But I'm not putting a whole lot of color in this part here. Because you're barely going to see it. But uh, let me get this put inside of here and I'll show you what that's going to look like together. Best fitting of the photo etch cockpit uh, piece in the back there and I don't have the, the cockpit part in there I'm just like showing the back of it and then I'll have a door covering it as well and some other detail but so you can see I painted inside there and I'm going to do some dry brushing on that as well to bring out some more detail on that roof uh, but other than that I'm not going to do any more painting on the back of it it's all just going to be backlit and it's just going to have, um, let's see if I can get a look from it, there you go. I'm just going to have some, some either thin styrene behind the parts that are white or use the paint, the clear paints to bring out the rest of it and, uh, and get that to light up. And that'll be basically the only part of the cockpit other than just painting the other interior to match. Obviously and getting a light behind that. So that shouldn't take too much. Uh, I am going to probably replace the chairs on the kit. I do want to use the part for it, but I want to use the um, the 3D printed Shapeways chairs instead. They're a little more accurate. So let me show you that here as well. So here's the part from the kit for the cockpit. And I've already cut out the back seats because they're the wrong size and they just don't look very well. Uh, and then here's the Shapeways one. It's very tiny. A little more accurate. Need to be cleaned up a bit and painted. So, uh, so what I'm looking to do, and I'll probably trim off that little knob at the bottom, but basically put them in there and take the place of them. Uh, once I get it all fitted together, I'll take a look and see. I don't want these to block the back wall. And interfere with uh, with that so we'll see what I might even do which I'm thinking about is to gouge out a little bit more of this and on either side so those seats can be sort of angled they can be kind of angled and facing another direction so so they're in there but uh, I don't want them to take away from the back wall and the lighting which is the the, the main part I'm concerned about uh, I did a little more of the um, dry brushing on that inner part. I also took some white. Uh, it's basically um, self-sticking uh, striping for like race cars. Just cut little teeny slices and put those on there. So what they those are, those are the extensions of the back white lit portion so that once again, you, you'll just see them from like an angle. You won't see a lot. But it will give that idea that um, the back wall extends out on those as well. All right. 
So uh, let me show you a little more work that I did on the back wall. And, uh, and then we'll get that fitted in there as well and see how that's coming along. Okay, so I put in the back door and then that brown wall edging around it. And once again, uh, I'm not really going for a really great paint job on this. That's not the goal. You're not really going to see it. A lot of this is going to be darkened in, in the back of the cockpit, so you're not really going to see it at all. Uh, I also used, as I said, some of the clear Tamiya paints. All the different colors, blue, red, green, yellow, orange and dab those on over a lot of the controls or the little see-through holes so let's show you how that's kind of looking there we go so that looks pretty cool and as you can see those horizontal lines top and bottom those are going to be white or just see-through uh, the rest of it is only going to be the color part those two holes there they go into the back of the kit you're not going to actually see those you're only going to see above those uh, the two holes themselves, they fit onto the back of the kit part. These two little, two little knobs right here. Another reason why I want to kind of use this one because it, it gives a nice fit. It puts it in right orientation to the back of it, so that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so this is all done. I have it all lit up. I may put some white styrene in those horizontal lines but we'll see let me get it in there and kind of rig up a light and we'll see what we're looking at and uh and kind of go from there and this is kind of what it's going to look like i mean you'll see some some hints of detail for the doors and things like that but other than this back wall i'm not going to have any other lights in the um in the cockpit other than the the natural light coming in through the front of it from the window all right, so let's take a look at that. All right, so here's a little test lighting, uh, and it looks pretty good. Those uh, horizontal slots, uh, I'm gonna put some white, uh, thin styrene behind them so they're a little more white. But, but even there, like the light is pretty close, so I can give it a little more distance if I want to. Uh, it gets a brighter light for all those, um, for all those colors. If I keep it that close, so that looks pretty good. I have to trim that down a little bit more to um, to match up. And of course, I haven't painted the interior to the cockpit yet, or the chairs, or put in the back chairs or anything. So, but that's going to look pretty cool. So um, I like the colors there. And and once again, you're going to see mostly like that. You're not going to see a lot of the colors that I've painted because they're a bit rough. But once the whole cockpit's together, you're not going to see that. All right, so let me see if I can uh, put this together and show you what it looks like if it is um, snapped into the, the cockpit roof as well. All right, there we go. So it's going to need a little ceiling around the edges, but that looks pretty cool. You can see a little bit of light leaks around the, the edges, but, um, but without that being painted inside the cockpit and you're just seeing the back of it dark and everything, that looks pretty awesome. So that's going to be kind of cool. You're going to see mostly darkness, and that's kind of what you see in the movie, unless they're showing inside. So you mostly just see those lights, especially the white ones. So, all right, so that's going to be pretty cool. Let me do one more test here. I'm going to put um, the, uh, the cockpit cone on it and see how that looks through there as well. All right, let me check that out. All right, there we go. So, yeah, you can still see quite a lot of that. That's a really nice shot right there. Uh, and this isn't going to be the final cone that I'm going to use. This is one the kit came with, but it is painted. There we go. So I will be using uh, the Shapeways one. So I think that'll give us even more light. Right now that's not painted or primed or anything, so it's just clear. So I didn't want to put it on, but, but that looks pretty awesome. So quite a few lights. Uh, I will have some figures in those little seats there. And I'm going to put those other seats in. I want to kind of play with it because I don't want to block those cool cockpit lights by putting those two back uh, chairs because they're pretty tall. I'll play with it and see. But yeah, that's pretty neat. So, 
All right. Of course, I'll have to do some more light blocking and, um, and go from there. I may or may not put anything in those white lights there because they look quite cool without any styrene. You don't see any light glares or anything. So I think that'll be fine. Obviously, I'll have to mask back there a little bit. You can see black mask that on the interior before I get the final light. So, okay. All right, but that's looking pretty awesome as far as the cockpit. All right, let me get a little bit more done on painting the interior there and see what we're going to do with the seats. And then we'll go from there. All right, there you go. Fantastic. Okay, so as the previous still showed, I got several more of these uh, sections of the cockpit completed. I painted the inside of the cockpit and I used a um, Tamiya Royal Light Gray. So it wouldn't clash with the other interior colors. I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be. I started, uh, I painted the, uh, the front passenger or um, pilot seats and they're going to be kind of a leathery look but worn out so I started with a flat flesh coating and I have that on there so that's drying once that's done I'll add some like a darker wash of some browns probably some flat earth in order to get it a more worn out look um, so that interior is, is painted and ready to go I also painted the um, control panel an in initial color and I just use the NATO black. And then I'm gonna dry brush some different metallics on that to bring out the detail. May not do some colors, we'll see. Nothing really super fancy, but just to give it some details and highlights on there. So I'm gonna dry brush some of those. And, uh, and the main thing I did, which you saw in the previous stills, is I took some uh, UV resistant uh, styrene and I cut out some sections and I curved it around and glued it back onto it in the bottom and it made a little light box. So I made it just so that it is just the right size to go on the back of the cockpit. Just on the top right above those two holes. That top half of the circle. So this will actually fit into the kit and go behind it and then uh, once I get it fit in just right, it's a little snug, I'm going to drill a hole right through the back of it, put the single LED, I'm going to paint the inside white so it'll reflect it a lot, and this will contain the light right where I want it to be. So I won't have to worry about masking off any more of these, of these, uh, of the cockpit cone section here, because it's difficult. Even if I masked it, you're still going to have a little gap there, and I don't want it to be showing any light through at all. So, uh, so that's going to be really nice. That's going to work out well. Uh, one other thing I did is I took some of the flat flesh it's really hard to get a focus on these. And I did a little bit of highlighting on that back door panel that's kind of a brownish, worn out look. And it has some little sections in between it. So, so that'll bring out a little more color in that. All right, so let me go ahead and finish working on this section. Actually, before I do that, let me show you real quick. Let me put it inside this tube here and show you how that's gonna work. So there it is inside of the tube, you can see it just fits right in there. It's not glued in or anything. It will eventually be. And of course, I'll seal around it to make sure that there's no uh, light leaking whatsoever. And once I get the once I get the LED glued into the back of it, right there in the center, same thing. I will probably adhere it with some five minute epoxy and paint black over that as well. So there'll be no light at all leaking out of this little section right here which will completely enclose the upper half of that back wall right there. And once I get it in there, I'll glue around the top edge as well and light mask it as well. So 
this will be attached onto this and the bottom and the cockpit before I stick it all into there and it won't probably really glue into the top at all but I won't have to it'll just slide right up into there so okay so I really like that I think that's gonna work well as a little light box once I get it all completed all right so let me work on that some more let me do some dry brushing of some metallics onto the control panel and the uh, the seats and we're just about ready to get this all together and uh, and have the cockpit lit and ready to go and here's the finished cockpit without the uh, the lighting I still have to finish that last uh, piece of the lighting box in the back with the LED get that lit up but here's the um, the seats that are weathered I gave them kind of a modeled looking leathery look with some uh, thin down flat earth on top of that flat flesh on the seats uh, I did some uh, metallic dry brushing on the uh, control panel to bring out a lot of that detail that looks pretty good I may do a little bit of my uh, Tamiya weathering master powders on there on the uh, on the control panel to bring out a little bit more I have some gunmetal and um, and some silver as well maybe a little bit of rust just to give it that washed out the rusted look as well so that looks pretty cool and once again I'm not using this cockpit cockpit piece I just have it in there right now to see how that's going to look and um, I'm going to use the Shapeways one and I still have to get this sanded down and uh, flat black inside of it get a coat of the um, of the regular gray on top of the kit before I glue it onto the outside that'll be done very the very end once I get all the lighting inside and and in place everything else so all right uh, here's kind of how this will look right now as far as the kit piece all right, so that's pretty cool there we go that's a nice little shot you can see those seats I am gonna have the figures in it uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca so I want to get those painted as well and get those in there um, and I still have to do the back seats from the shapeways like I said as well put those in there there's that look right there and I want to get a little more color in those little controls there that you're gonna see prominently probably some of the rusts in there detail it all right all right I want to show one more shot um, I used the uh, shapeways uh, cockpit cone this time and I taped it on there in order to see uh, what that's going to look like and show you the difference as you can see the front of these quite a bit of difference uh, that circle there the openings uh, a lot more visibility through the Shapeways one yeah look at that a lot more accuracy as far as seeing it so I think even the profile yeah when you look at the profile you can see how much that gives you visibility these have a lot more of a recess in these windows this one is a lot thinner of a profile so you can see a lot through there it's very nice uh, so this is how this is going to look through there you can see the the controls i did put some more of the tamiya weathering powders on there weathering master uh, i like those a lot once you put them on they don't have the same appearance as paint they give you the uh, look of, of metal you can see the how it shimmers there it leaves a nice polished look with the silver and the, the gun metal so that really brings that control panel alive it looks really bright and you can see the seats really well through this as well uh, and once I get that cone painted that bottom inside there will be painted as well so you won't see that it'll probably be the the light gray or maybe even a dark gray contrast something like that as far as that um, and what I'll probably end up doing I know I said in the last little clip that I was going to go with Han Solo and Chewbacca I will probably not do that I already have Finn in the uh, gunner station so I'll probably just put Ray in the pilot seat that way it won't block a lot of that detail and the lighting that I'm going to be doing 
and it'll also keep it in the same theme that I'm going to end up with the diorama. Uh, it's going to be on a, a little flat base for the desert on Jakku and uh, a couple of the first order TIE fighters uh, chasing it. Um, and so that would be more accurate to that particular scene. Uh, Finn and Ray in the ship and not Han Solo or Chewbacca yet. So, all right. But uh, that control panel looks really good. I don't think I'll be doing anything more on that. That looks great. I like how that shines. And just a few more tweaks on the back lighting. The little light box. Get that in place. Make sure it's all fitted. And, uh, and I'll be about ready to wrap up this video. Get that onto there. Uh, I'm not going to finish this cone, but I can put it on there and show you how that's going to look. All right, so let me get that lighting done. And we'll... Go ahead and wrap this up. Okay, so I painted the inside of my little mini light box with some white paint. There's the uh, surface mounted LED in there, sticking through a little hole from the back. And I've begun gluing it in place. So I positioned it and I put a little bit of uh, glue on there to hold that wire in place. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, um, a little piece of a thin styrene sheet over the top of that light to kind of cover it up, give it some white background there, and then I'll get that glued in place as well. And then I can get it painted black to, uh, to seal that up, and that'll finish my little light box. All right, there we go. So I glued a little thin piece of uh, white styrene over top of that light, and the whole wire is glued on the back, nice and solid. Alright, and then there's the front of it. The little SMD sticking through. And uh, let me turn that on and I'll show you what that's going to look like. Here we go. Okay, so. Nice and bright. Yeah, that's a nice, nice and bright little light there. Uh, I will paint that over top with some black to keep that um, from shining through the back once I get everything glued together uh, because it's gonna I'm gonna glue the uh, metal piece here the photo etch onto this and then I'm gonna light block around the edges of it and this piece here so once that's all glued together I can go ahead and, um, and make sure the only light is coming out of the front here all right, so let me go ahead and put this on top of there for the moment, and I'll just show you how that's going to look. Okay, there we go. So there's, um, I'm holding the light box on the back of it, and this is what it'll look like. It'll be glued on and sealed around that edge so you won't get any light leaks. Um, but there you go. That's pretty cool. It's lighting up everything I want it to be, including those white bars there that are nice and bright, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then um, once that uh, once I get it together I'll just put some black over that piece of plastic there on the on the back and uh, and there won't be any light leaking around the edges of that so that's turned out really cool so let me get that uh, glued in place and we'll see how that turns out it looks really good All right so I have the photo etch back wall glued on to my little light box I still have just a few more spots to seal off around the edge. I'm just letting that glue dry and that little bat, little white spot in the back. But uh, let me show you how that's going to look. All right, there we go. All right. And the beauty of this is that it's all one contained piece. So I don't have to worry about blocking off any of the kit parts to make sure that there's no light showing through. So that turned out really, really awesome. And, uh, and it's ready to go ahead and do a test and put it inside there and, and let's see what that's all going to look like once it's all put together. Alright, I wanted to show you this inside the top section before I put it all together to kind of show off that, uh, that top bit a little bit. That I um, did the gray and the black and uh, did some dry brushing and those little pieces of uh, racing uh, stripping on there. 
screen. You can see that does mask around all the edges. Uh, the lights do illuminate the top a little bit and it'll do the same on the back of the cockpit. So, all right, so that looks pretty cool. And I think that's gonna work excellently to, to get that all masked off for me. All right, let me just finish putting this together and see how that looks all one piece now. All right, and there it is inside the cockpit without the cone on it. Looks really cool. And then nice saw uh, weathered seats. All right, let me put the cockpit cone on and I'll show you what that's going to look like. And I'll show you both of them, the, the Shapeways and the kit part. All right, and there's the Shapeways and, and I just have a flat black coating on it right now. So obviously it's going to be painted gray like the rest of the kit. But uh, I wanted to give you an idea of this on how you can see a lot of the detail in there including the seats and the controls is pretty cool uh, and the lights all right and then I'll show you one more video here with the uh, the kit part that is gray to just give you kind of an idea of what you're gonna see did initially on here to kind of give you the idea all right so that turned out really well I really like the um, the cockpit lights in the back look awesome photo etch was a great idea and uh, once I get the Shapeways cone painted and weathered and everything else and put it on there, you're going to see a lot more of that detail as well and some figures in the cockpit. So, okay. So I'm going to wrap this video up and I will see you next week. And uh, this is starting to come together pretty good. I should be getting ready to put the whole kit together with all the lighting. I still have a few more things to do on the back engine lights. And, uh, and that'll just leave the final weathering on the outside of the kit. All right. I uh, will see you next week.